So some of the biggest dinosaurs were really big and um, paleontologists have noticed this a long time ago and asked a lot of questions about how it is that they got so big. But what is often overlooked is even the smallest dinosaurs were not really that small compared to many vertebrates alive today. We've occasionally found some pretty small dinosaurs, but they all turn out to be babies. So if I found a mouse-sized dinosaur, I would be so surprised and excited. Hi, I'm Roger Benson and I'm the Macaulay Curator of Dinosaur Paleobiology at the American Museum of Natural History. Now I'm here in the Big Bone Room, which is a storeroom where we keep hundreds of giant dinosaur bones from the late Jurassic. But I'm also interested to study the fossils of much smaller animals, like this one. Often, because it's much easier to find the fossils of large animals, they're just easier to see because their bones are large, we end up studying as paleontologists some of the biggest animals that lived, and that includes giant dinosaurs. But small animals are important today. They make up almost all species on Earth, and the same was true in the past. So if we really want to understand ecosystems of the past, and where the diversity of animals that we see today came from, so its evolutionary origins, then we need to know much more about small-bodied animals. Over the last 10 years, I've particularly spent a lot of time in the Middle Jurassic of Scotland, in places where we don't really find many dinosaur bones, but we find the bones of much smaller animals. When we're looking for small animals, we get our faces right up close to the rock, and we're uh, looking for tiny, tiny bones that we just couldn't see if we weren't crawling around on our hands and knees. We go through a lot of trousers this way. And these are fossils whose bones are so small that it's physically difficult for us to extract them from the rock. And we're really able to explore these fossils and understand their importance just thanks to new technology like CT scanning. So the CT scanning allows us to look inside of a rock like this, that we haven't physically extracted the bones, but we can digitally peel away the layers of rock and study the animal inside and then understand its importance for evolutionary history. So in the big bone room, I'm surrounded by the bones of some of the biggest dinosaurs that ever lived. And those are the giant long-necked sauropod dinosaurs that commonly weighed around 40 tons. And the biggest ones, animals like Patagotitan or Argentinosaurus, could have weighed 60 to 70 tons. Now that is much bigger than the largest land mammals today. So the biggest elephants might weigh up to eight tons, and that's about one-tenth of the size of the largest dinosaurs. The smallest dinosaurs include small predators like Microraptor, but also small herbivores like the Ornithischian or bird hip dinosaur Fruitadens. And these animals weighed at their smallest about half a kilo or one pound. That's about the size of a big rabbit. Now half a kilo seems small to us, it's about half the weight of a typical bag of flour. But actually this is big compared to many living groups. So a mammal that weighs half a kilo is in the 75th percentile of mammal body masses. So three quarters of mammals are smaller than that. And nine tenths, so 90% of living bird species are smaller than that. Almost all lizard species are smaller than this as well. And the same is true for amphibians. So it seems remarkable that the smallest dinosaurs were actually quite big animals compared to many other species on Earth today, but also in the past. Now you may be thinking, but hang on a second, I know there are tiny birds, like hummingbirds, that weigh just a few grams. And you keep telling me that birds are dinosaurs. So how is it that birds are able to be tiny when other dinosaurs weren't? In the early Cretaceous, about 120 million years ago, we see the first rich fossil records of early birds. And then, in the blink of a geological eye, suddenly, birds are small. Smaller than any other dinosaur that ever lived. And this is really a biological enigma. Not only that birds were able to do something that's unique among dinosaurs, but also that it seems to happen so quickly and so early in bird evolution. So we have this unusual situation where the ancestors of dinosaurs could be tiny, the living descendants of dinosaurs, the birds, they're able to be tiny, but dinosaurs themselves seem to be forbidden from being tiny. And we don't really understand that, but it seems really important that we should if we really want to understand dinosaurs and their biology. One of those reasons is maybe we just didn't find the fossils. Now that could happen because firstly it's hard to find small things because they're small. Uh, it's hard for us to see them in the first place. But it could also happen 
because small animals have more fragile bones that preserve less readily, um, so their fossils don't occur in the first place. Now both of these explanations are unlikely because dinosaurs lived alongside much smaller animals, including lizards and mammals and amphibians, and we frequently find the skeleton of these small animals that lived alongside the dinosaurs. So it seems very likely that genuinely tiny mouse-sized dinosaurs just didn't exist in the first place. So we need to look for biological explanations. So what is it about dinosaurs that meant that they just couldn't get so small? So perhaps it's possible that dinosaurs, with their reptile-like methods of getting food, but their somewhat mammal and bird-like hot body temperatures, were somehow physiologically and biologically unique in a way that forbid them from having small adult body sizes. Now this is something we can try and model mathematically, and confusingly, it doesn't really provide a good explanation. It could explain why dinosaurs might be slightly larger than other animals, but it doesn't explain the fact that in general, even the smallest dinosaurs are much larger, you know, a hundred times larger than the smallest birds, the smallest mammals, and the smallest lizards. So we still have a lot more work to do to really understand this enigmatic feature of dinosaur biology.